now that I've uh, created a complete mess in the office. This video is about all the gear I use to shoot and edit videos. But they would see me when I'm coming. So, <sighs> much better. I also forgot to mention something that I think is probably one of the more important things of this whole video. It doesn't matter whatever camera gear you have. That is, I wanna stress that the most. Uh, it's not about what you have, it's what you can make with what you have. Uh, the best camera you have is the one that you have with you, and I truly believe that story is king. Uh, so, something I struggled with when I was starting out in video is if I didn't have the same gear they had, the, the people that I would watch the videos of, I couldn't make the same videos that they made. And that is, that's, probably the furthest thing from the truth. Uh, so yeah, I just wanted to preface that now. Now back to the, the video, okay? I'm gonna kind of tell you guys what I use and why I use it just in a really brief way. I get a few messages a week, uh, mostly asking about how I shoot the fishing videos. So I'm going to kind of primarily focus on the fishing side of stuff and what I use when I'm on the boat uh, and when I'm off the boat. Uh, my first camera that I use is actually uh, the camera I am kind of retiring. It's becoming my secondary camera. This is my off uh, the water camera. It is the a7 III. You know, you can shoot 1080, 120, uh, shoots 4K at 24, does really, really well in low light. Uh, I'm actually retiring this one to use the camera that I'm actually shooting on, and that is the a7S III. Uh, it shoots 4K at 120. It's an absolute beast uh, for video, for photo, it's a smaller photo size, uh, but primarily, like I said, this is a video on um, the video that I shoot. So I would, I could not recommend this camera more. This is the camera I use for most of the off-water stuff. Um, it's primarily shot on uh, with a 24 millimeter f1.4 lens, uh, which I'm also shooting with, so I can't show you that. That is primarily my best off the water setup. Uh, a lot of times I am running, gunning, running around, trying to find Brandon, uh, shoot B-roll, uh, and that lens gives me kind of the artistic feel with the shallow depth of field at f.14, or 1.4, at f1.4. Next, the camera that I also don't have right now, uh, it's with Brandon, it is the Sony A99. It is not a mirrorless camera. Yeah. Yeah, that's right, not a mirrorless. And this camera has insane autofocus. It's great photography camera too. Um, it's no longer being made by Sony, but uh, it is a DSLR and it's a little bit bigger. The form factor, it has been beat up over the years. I can vouch for that. Plenty of uh, harsh bow rides. That is our go-to camera on the water. Uh, the lens that I use for that is the one to 400 millimeter. Uh, it allows me to kind of punch in and really get some details when he's fishing. Uh, it's a great for details kind of lens. The autofocus is insane. Like I said, you can't go wrong with it. Uh, next, this 7200 F.4 or F4. Uh, it is a, it's a great lens. Uh, if you have the money, I would do the 2.8, but this is a great option if you're willing to kind of budget a little bit more. It's a great, great lens, uh, but it's also for sale. Next, another lens that I use a little bit is uh, the 16 to 35 F4, another great, great lens. Uh, you really can't go wrong with these, especially if you're using some sort of stabilizer. Uh, the wider angle you use, the, the more stable the footage will look in general. Uh, 
It is a great lens for landscapes also. Um, but this is a really good lens. I would probably, this, this is my very first lens I ever purchased. And um, it's a, I would say probably the best starter lens for video. Uh, you can do so much with it. It's relatively affordable and uh, Yeah, just a, it's an absolute beast uh, Next this was my favorite lens for the longest time until I ruined it Shooting with Brandon the Sony 24 to 70 2.8 uh, This lens is really really like the all-around shooter if you're gonna have one lens and one lens only and you're willing to spend about two grand, this is the lens. Uh, like I said, you can get kind of that wide with the 24 and then also be able to kind of punch in with a 70 millimeter. Great, great option. I uh, can't recommend it anymore. I just wish I wouldn't have ruined the, the lens. All right, so a lot of times, one thing I like to use uh, in a lot of the videos and, and pretty much any video nowadays is uh, a drone, some type of drone. I use the Mavic 2 Pro. Uh, I can't say that I have any issues with it. I think it's a great drone uh, for what you're able to do. It's the Hasselblad, not the Zoom. If you're uh, looking for other options, I know DJI has other options. The Spark, um, and there's, there's the Mavic or the Mini. Uh, there's, there's plenty of drone options, but I know DJI as a whole does a really good job with their drones and their lineup, so can't go wrong. So a lot of times people ask me what I use to get stable footage in the boat. I use a Binroll monopod. I don't know the exact model, I'll, I'll put it up here. It's actually in Brandon's uh, house right now and I'm unable to get it. It's also pretty beat up, so I'm gonna have to buy another one. Uh, but for on the water footage, any type of monopod is a great one. It's almost essential to have a monopod when you're shooting on the water. Two thumbs up, monopod, on the water footage. Next, uh, we have a lot of times we like to shoot with POV footage while we're on the water also. And these are honestly such a game changer when it comes to footage. I know a lot of the fishing industry uses these, uh, but it's the GoPro 8 and the GoPro 9. I cannot say enough about these things. I thought for the longest time there wasn't much of an improvement until they came out with the 9 and the 8, uh, but the 9 is an absolute game changer. If you don't have the 9, 100% recommend. It's worth all the money that you, you would throw into it. Uh, the footage is insane. Stabilization is insane. Uh, the features you have, the front screen uh, actually shows uh, an LCD of what you're recording so you can kind of log with it too. Or when you're on the boat, you can kind of see, oh, okay, I'm in frame. Great, great option. An eight is a great option too, but I would, if you have the option to go with a nine, do that. What we've always used for the last three years is uh, they're the road link uh, wireless transmitters and and receiver so it's you're, you're essentially using a lav mic uh, that will be this transmitter will be hooked on to Brandon and uh, this will be on my camera and it wirelessly sends the the audio um, to, to the camera and just records straight to the camera incredibly incredibly helpful I uh, cannot recommend these enough uh, the range is like 300 yards we've never really had much of an issue uh, with range, other than the fact that they are kind of bulky, uh, mainly so the transmitter putting it in the pocket, uh, it is it's a little bit it's a little bit big, but great great uh, to have. This is this is essential if you want to shoot on the water stuff uh, from boat to boat. This is this is a must have. Even if you're shooting um, on the boat, this is another. This is these are just must haves. Honestly. Go with these, uh, you can't go wrong. All right, so next is uh, something I kind of started using this last year. Um, it is the Small HD 5.5, I believe it's called uh, Focus. It's an LCD monitor, uh, but it just sits on top of the camera. It's a great, great uh, way to be able to actually see what you're recording rather than looking through the little LCD on the back. A lot of times I'll have a hood over the top of this, a little tiny hood that shows, that gives me a little bit of shade so I can actually see more so what I'm recording. And uh, with that, it's a really, really good option. You just, it hooks in with a cable right to your camera uh, and just gives you a bigger view and a brighter view of what you're recording. It also helps you see what's in focus. You can put focus peaking. There's tons of settings on these things. Uh, this thing is way, way, way worth it. Uh, there's other options. I think the Ninja is the Ninja, Atmos Ninja is another good option, but uh, 
the small HD focus is a good option for the price too. I'll, I'll kind of go into batteries too a little bit now. Usually for the Sony A99, I carry four batteries uh, and that will last me the entire eight hours on the water. Uh, I usually will have two Sony A7 III batteries or A7S III batteries. I'll carry two of those with me uh, for the day and then I will carry two uh, big batteries. Uh, they're, they're massive, but uh, they will keep these, this thing powered all day long and help you seeing what is on the back of your camera instead of looking through the viewfinder or the monitor. Uh, definitely get one of these. Uh, next, I carry all my gear in this UAG 24 liter backpack. Uh, it's pretty amazing. This thing is really, really a game changer when it comes to be able to put all your stuff in here and have it somewhat compact. Uh, I've actually taken the in case sells a backpack and I just bought their cubes uh, and I will actually put my camera gear in the cubes and then the cubes go into here, uh, which which are super handy. I can grab the cube real quick, just a second. So, so the cubes are here, uh, they look kind of like this. So I will place my camera gear in here. It's pretty compacted, uh, it's safe, it's padded, this is great. And then I will just slide this cube into this backpack and it will organize my gear. Definitely, definitely uh, can't recommend this backpack enough. And pretty much everything they put out there from, uh, they do watch, watch bands, uh, they do AirPod cases and phone cases. Next, I will go into, this is my stabilizer. It is a Crane 2. Uh, Honestly, I hardly ever use this unless we are shooting something more so for commercial based stuff. Uh, I, I really don't use this as much as I should. Uh, there's also a Ronin 2. I'm not super familiar with it anymore, uh, but that's another great option. I know they, they do similar, similar things. They keep your footage stable. When I store all my footage, I have gotten in the habit of using these Lacey uh, hard drives. Usually I'll get like the five terabyte uh, or a two terabyte one and kind of store all the footage from the season on these. Uh, and I label them, I put uh, masking tape, it's probably hard to see, but I put masking tape over um, the, the hard drive and then I will write what I've recorded. Uh, this is a brand new hard drive, so it doesn't have any masking tape. Uh, but yeah, definitely recommend the Lacey hard drives. Uh, I think they're the Lacey Ruggeds. I'll have everything leaked down below too. I will kind of backtrack real quick. I forgot something. Uh, so for these these uh, wireless uh, transmitters and receivers, I had been using like Kirkland batteries, cheap little batteries, um, and they would like die halfway, three quarters of the way through the day, and I'd have to like toss brand in some batteries. So I decided to get rechargeable batteries off Amazon rechargeable battery just does better for some reason. Uh, so I will use those now and just charge them at the end of every day. Uh, not only are you not using as much batteries and just throwing them away, uh, but you actually get better battery life, uh, which another game changer for me when I realized that instead of carrying eight batteries in the day, I would only have to carry four. All right, so uh, a lot of times for filters that I use for cameras, uh, I really only use a filter for uh, one of my lenses and that's the 24 millimeter and I use a variable adjuster or a variable indie filter. Uh, it's a game changer for being able to shoot 24 frames a second. You want to keep your shutter speed around 50 frames a second. Uh, I might kind of go over that in another video, but uh, these indie filters allow you to shoot at 24 or at 50 or at 24 frames a second and not bump your shutter speed way high so everything looks so shaky. Lastly, let's see, let's, I got a few more things. Uh, so what I use for a computer is I use a MacBook Pro 15 uh, inch MacBook. It's 2008, it has 32 gigs of RAM, but basically uh, with a MacBook Pro, you're going to want to have a, a decent amount of RAM, I would say at least 16, uh, gigabytes of RAM, depending on what editing you're doing. Uh, it doesn't hurt to have as much RAM as you can. Uh, I have 32 gigs. Uh, my processor is a 2.9 gigahertz, six core Intel i9. Again, I don't really know the like insane specs of what computers are. I just know this has worked for me. Uh, but I do know that your graphics card is really, really important when it comes to uh, editing. 
that just allows you to kind of go from clip to clip to clip, look through stuff, move stuff around, just more functions uh, and be able to play back at a speed that you can actually edit. And it's not just dink, 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 and just really glitchy on you. So if you can edit fluidly through, it makes that workflow even nicer. Man, they cranked the heat up in here. It is like a thousand degrees. Whew. So MacBook, MacBook Pro, great stuff. Uh, like I said, I don't know all the specs on this, but I do know the basic stuff and it's worked for me. Uh, it is covered with a UAG case, which super rad when you're traveling. This thing has saved my life more than uh, enough times. It's it's worth, worth every penny, keeping your MacBook safe. Um, and then kind of for software, let me kind of go over what I use for software for editing videos. I use Premiere Pro. As much as we all hate Premiere Pro, we're all using it. Been the program I've edited with most of my career. Uh, I know I've edited with Final Cut 10 uh, when I very first started and it's a great program too. I know a lot of people love it. Uh, and it's it really does primarily the same thing. I just have worked out my workflow with Premiere Pro to be pretty flawless in terms of where I know what stuff, where things are. I know how to get short keys. I know how to do stuff a lot more efficiently. Um, but I know there's other programs out there. Um, Final Cut being one. Uh, there's also uh, DaVinci. There's, there's tons, but I would recommend Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro to start out. Um, so yeah, those are, those are all great editing platforms. I use Lightroom for photos, Adobe. I'm pretty much Adobe across the board. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely, definitely uh, kind of whatever works for you. All right, so thank you for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. If you could uh, leave a comment down below or um, like this video, I appreciate it. I'm gonna start creating more videos uh, catered to like everything, just the filmmaking world. I do love making videos and I want to kind of create more on this channel. Uh, I honestly have a lot of fun doing it. So I appreciate you guys. Thank you guys for watching and uh, don't forget to uh, subscribe and let me know what other videos you want to see. It is like a thousand degrees in here. Of course, literally the sun pops up right